hot topic amongst TF2 players in the past few years has been the lack of support from Valve for the competitive community. Since the game was released in 2007, the esports scene has grown leaps and bounds, going from lands pertaining to just one game to huge events catering for multiple, offering huge prize pools and having exposure normally expected of real life sports. Despite this, TF2 has never received the same backing many of its competitors have, and this was covered largely in the recent documentary Ready Up, which addressed Valve's lack of input into the scene and the resulting exodus of some top players to games such as Overwatch. Zebasai, Tavik, Taimu, Harry Hook, Seagull, Muma and Pine are all examples of former TF2 players who moved to Overwatch with the hope of it growing into a large eSport, and are currently participating in the Overwatch League. Analysts like Sideshow and Bren all began their careers in TF2, but are now mainstays in the OWL, leaving due to the lack of support from Valve. To some it may come as a surprise. Valve operates arguably the two biggest esports in the world currently, in CSGO and Dota 2. TF2 is five years older than both, and yet has received none of the backing their two younger siblings have. It can be argued this is understandable, with Counter-Strike being one of the biggest competitive games since the late 90s, and Dota being a popular franchise before Valve even took it on. The platform was already there for Valve to build on, and they have done so very successfully. CSGO has multiple major tournaments a year, with the total prize pool in 2017 reaching nearly $20 million. The only game with more money being handed out is Dota 2, which, year on year, breaks the record for the highest individual prize pool. The 2017 International Tournament had nearly $25 million on offer. With these numbers being thrown around, it raises the question, why has TF2 been left in the shadows with regards to developer support? For CSGO and Dota, Valve have given their name to tournaments, organised them and offered up large paychecks, resulting in the millions previously spoken about. The most TF2 has received over the years was the acknowledgement of the comp scene even existing, with the inclusion of league medals as in-game items, and the odd blog post or in-game announcement to highlight a major event. Despite the lack of any developer support, the TF2 community has been able to provide and organise tournaments for the best part of a decade. In North America, ESEA used to hold three lands a year to decide the invite winners, and more recently ESU runs the Rewind tournament in California. In Europe, we've had major tournaments in multiple countries. Gamers Assembly in France, Dreamhack and ESU in Sweden, Deutschland in Germany, and Copenhagen Games in Denmark, to name but a few. The biggest has always been the iSeries in the UK, which has been the focal point of European teams for many years, and since i46 in 2012 has been seen as the World Championships for TF2, with teams coming from North America and Australia to compete for the crown. This all seems like the TF2 community has it sorted, but when you consider the biggest prize pools have all been less than $20,000, for example, Rewind 2 had $17,500, while i61 had 9.5, and the fact that overseas teams have all required crowdfunding to even attend the events, it sounds less than ideal. Throw in that organisers are often unpaid volunteers doing it just for the love of the game and you can see why over many years the lack of any financial input from Valve has burnt out many people. So the question remains, why hasn't Valve had any financial or physical input into the TF2 competitive scene? Some suggested the split of the community in game modes was a reason, with 6v6 and Highlander both being played, while 4v4 and 7v7 have also appeared more recently. However, the biggest tournaments, both in attendance, prize pool and viewership, have always been in the 6v6 scene, and Valve seemed to fall in line with this as their, albeit flawed, in-game matchmaking system was focused around this game mode. Others have said the inconsistency of in-game weapon bans was the reason, with multiple weapons in TF2 not allowed in many leagues. But over the past couple of years, all the major TF2 leagues have grouped together to create a global whitelist for everyone to use, meaning lands operate around the same system. The argument that TF2 is difficult to watch as a spectator is surely now invalid, with the popularity of Overwatch showing that class-based shooters with chaotic fights bring in the viewers regardless. The infrastructure, community, organisation and players are all there. All it requires is Valve to put their name to it and provide a cash injection for a prize pool. As previously mentioned, anything above $20,000 would already make it the biggest in TF2 history, and that is nothing compared to the numbers being put into the other games. They could even follow the Dota 2 model, which is something I've been saying for years, and create an in-game item that could be bought, which would put a percentage of the money into a prize pool. Last year, Valve put $1.6 million into the international prize pool. The remaining $23 million came from the purchases of the compendium in-game. This year, for example, in the first 24 hours alone, an extra $5.7 million was added through purchases. 
It's why I've been racking my brains as to why Valve doesn't do this in TF2. It's been an experimental game for Valve for a long time. In-game skins, the Steam community market, and we are clearly a community with a lust for in-game items. Throw in an in-game item and have it give you contracts or count points or kills, anything similar to the current builds of the TF2 badges, and have the profits go towards an upcoming TF2 LAN, the i-series for example. We will break price pool records in no time, create an incentive for sponsors to look for TF2 teams again and give motivation for those at the top of the game to keep competing. We've already lost a lot of top players who are tired of Valve's lack of involvement, and this trend will continue if something isn't done. And this seems like such an obvious and simple solution. I can only see this being profitable for Valve, both financially and in terms of the game's health. So why don't they implement this method? What are your guys' thoughts on this? Do you see any other reason why Valve is so quiet in supporting the competitive TF2 scene? Would you buy an in-game item to benefit a prize pool if it gave you in-game rewards? Would you be more likely to attend a LAN as a player or a spectator if there were huge prize pools available? Let me know what you think in the comments. As always guys, take care and I'll see you next time.